Well, it is go time for the U.S. Air Force's new T-7A Red Hawk trainer aircraft. This week, Boeing and Saab rolled out the new T-7A, the military's first digitally designed trainer aircraft. Saab's new West Lafayette plant will be a big contributor to that trainer. And we'll join Saab Aerospace GM Robert Uliberry from an event in St. Louis in just a moment. Many Hoosiers have had hands in designing the aft of the plane. That's the middle section at Saab's new $37 million facility in West Lafayette. Here's a round Indiana reporter Mary Rachel Redmond with her visit to the plant, then under construction about a year ago. From Amelia Earhart and her crew at Oakland, California, ready for her great aerial adventure around the world flight by way of the equator, a journey no pilot has yet attempted. Two. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Two aviation legends that left an indelible mark on Purdue University. You could even argue their legacy in part has helped attract some of the top engineering talent in the world to West Lafayette. Purdue's a, a leading innovator as well as has uh, the top engineering schools in aerospace and engineering. So perhaps it's no surprise that Sweden-based Saab decided to expand its U.S. footprint in advanced manufacturing on Purdue's campus and officially becoming an American company. By having that talent base uh, readily accessible to us, it really promotes um, the culture of growth and, and innovation and product design. That product is the T-7 Red Hawk, an advanced trainer jet for the United States Air Force, and the first brand new fighter trainer for the military branch in over 60 years. This is an important program for the United States Air Force because it's replacing an aging fleet. The, the T-38 was first flown in 1959. Um, and has been uh, the, the trainer of choice for, for tens of years since then. Uh, but it's reached its end of life, so the maintenance costs are extremely high, and they're also not as reliable, and the T-7A fills that need. And things are moving right along to start production, including the completion of Saab's 100,000 square foot facility. I see these blue lines on the floor. Is that going to indicate kind of where the manufacturing process is going to happen, machinery? It is. Our portion of the aircraft is the aft section, which is essentially the entire aircraft minus the wing, engine, nose cone, and cockpit. It's hard to imagine right now. So, I mean, literally, it's huge, right? Is, so will it, will it, it span? It, you know? it, will, it will fill the entire volume of, of this factory, correct. So there'll be people working on it from up top correct. and below. And below, correct, and inside. So given that the, the aircraft is kind of like a hollow tube, it's too big for us to do all of the work from the ground. So therefore, we install a, a second story so that we can do work safely from above. Because generally, you can take this. So when this is fully functional, how many folks will be on the floor? So we'll have a little over 130 employees out on the factory side. And while the new T-7 Red Hawk may be the most technologically advanced trainer jet ever made, its name is a nod to one of history's most celebrated group of pilots from World War II. I one of my ambitions as a combat pilot. The tail of our aircraft is painted red, which is an ode to the Tuskegee Airmen of World War II. We look to pay homage to that. What an opportunity like this produces is you're actually talking to someone that would employ our student. And we want our student to have relevant experiences. So we're excited to be able to, to work closely with them as a partner. In a perfect world, let's say, you know, 10, 15 years from now, how do you envision Saab here in West Lafayette? So there's going to be an incredible amount of growth. Uh, we have high expectations that we will recruit uh, best in class talent. And uh, as we continue to, to be a, a leader in the aerospace market, the possibilities are, are limitless. Mary Rachel Redman, Inside Indiana Business. Well, certainly much has transpired since then. And for more now on the rollout of the T-7A Red Hawk and what it means to Indiana uh, and innovation in our state, I'm pleased to be joined by Saab Vice President and General Manager Robert Uliberry. And Robert, uh, the last time uh, uh, we talked, uh, you know, really things were just kind of beginning to get uh, into shape in West Lafayette. Right now, you are in St. Louis at a Boeing facility where you've just completed uh, a ceremony uh, for the aircraft. Talk about uh, the event and where things are. Absolutely. This is a huge milestone in our program. Uh, we're very excited to be wrapping up the EMD phase with the last aft shipping out of Sweden into St. Louis in the first uh, production unit coming out of the St. Louis, Missouri facility. 
Uh, the, the T-7 is due to replace uh, the aging fleet of trainers with the U.S. Air Force. And this is really the start of production for us. So we're extremely excited. And, and very interesting, uh, an important aircraft uh, to be sure. And very interesting too, the tie to the Tuskegee Airmen of World War II, those, those brave warriors and, and what they meant uh, with, uh, with the Red Tails. Talk about that, uh, that piece uh, of this story. Absolutely, the Tuskegee Airmen, uh, having flown in World War II, the fighters and the bombers, really faced a lot of adversity uh, in the, the armed forces. And they distinguished their aircraft by painting the tails red. And what an honor and a tribute to paint the tails of our aircraft red uh, to really signify the path, the, the, the trailblazing ways as to which uh, we've really improved as a nation, as well as to honor the fighters and the bombers of that time. Robert, talk about uh, the West Life, uh, Lafayette facility. You're about ready for production uh, now. What, uh, what is going to be taking place there? How substantial is it going to be for the, the West Lafayette area, that region, but also the Indiana economy? Absolutely. So uh, we're going to see over $100 million invested in this site. Right now, we have 65 employees with about 30 to 40 job postings. We'll be well over 100 employees by the end of this year and we'll create over 300 jobs with this program. So this is, this is a program for the long term. Uh, it's a multi-billion dollar contract that's gonna bring jobs to our area, as well as research and innovation with the university for, for many years to come. Yeah, and as, as we wrap up, I mentioned the T uh, Tuskegee Airmen, that connection. There's obviously a very intentional connection to Purdue University and its aerospace and innovation history and heritage. That's an important part, I know, of the sob story in, in West Lafayette and in Indiana. Absolutely. Uh, about 50% of our, our professional staff in the front office are Purdue graduates. Uh, more than 20% of our workforce are veterans. Uh, there's just a really great ecosystem we live in that uh, both provides talent as well as access to research and development. So we're really excited to be here. Robert Ulibarri, uh, who is running the, uh, the Saab facility in West Lafayette, coming to us from St. Louis and a big uh, event for the new trainer aircraft. Robert, I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to join us, and we look forward to visiting you in West Lafayette. Thank you very much for